the room about um, image stabilization on the sensor. Do you think that's going to happen? No. <laughs> <laughs> So, first order of business, um, this week Nikon announced the development of a D6. So, we had a lot of people saying that they thought that mirrorless was going to completely take over and that yeah. there was going to be no more DSLRs, Nikon just ignoring DSLRs. So, what do we think about the D6? I think it's a good announcement. Yeah. I think it's great that we have all the specifications. <laughs> Um, Full disclosure. <laughs> okay, so we don't know, so we don't actually know what's going to be in it yet, but looking at the D5 and previous models, we certainly can speculate that we've got um, a bumped up sensor resolution. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, we need that. I don't think that they'll necessarily go to D850 level because yeah. that then inhibits other things. Would you um, reckon 24, 30 megapixels? Something around yeah. there, I, I would have thought. I mean, the technology is already there for a D810 style yeah. sensor, so it could be 36. Thing is that the D5 and that whole series of cameras is always a sports and wildlife body, yeah. so you don't necessarily want 45 megapixels at 14 frames per second. Um, yeah. In terms of frames per second, so the D5 with mirror up can shoot 14 frames per second, but inherently it's 11. Yeah, do you frames. think they can top that? They can try. They can definitely try. I mean, you know, everybody wants a machine gun sounding I camera know. on the side of a football pitch and stuff. Um, so we've got, and then autofocus, what do you reckon about the autofocus? I think autofocus is already very good, mm. but they can do better. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, I think we need a cutting edge low light performance. Yes. And video functionality. Yeah. Now the the top spot for the flagship bodies has always been focusing speed and low light performance. Yes. Um, so that does make sense. Um, in terms of video performance, so the D5 had 4K, but was it limited? It was limited, and then they released updates right. to increase to 30 minutes from right. 5. Exactly. So to wrap up on the D6, um, do you think that they'll put SnapBridge in it? I don't know, but it's great that they're developing one, which they announced. So yeah. <laughs> it's happening. Uh, it will come out before the Olympics in Japan. Yes. And I think it would be great if they include some sort of Wi-Fi functionality, either snub breach or some other that thing. That would so, make sense. Yes. So the, the D850 has it, why not? Why not? Put exactly, it just in throw it in, patch yeah. it up. Exactly. Um, and that's about all we can say about that, really. Yeah, it's all the happening. speculations that we can possibly make. Exactly on the same day, you can also announce the development of 120 to um, 300 f2.8 lens. Yeah. What do you think about it? Uh, I am thinking, trying to compare it with something that is already available, we've got the 180 to 400 mm -hmm. f4, yeah. uh, which has been a surprisingly popular lens for us. We have lots and lots of people wanting the best that they can get for wildlife while also being very versatile, has the built-in teleconverter. Doesn't look like there's a built-in teleconverter with the no. 120 to 300. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe it's supposed to be for people who haven't taken up the 180 to 400 yet, or where it's going to fit in the range of lenses. There hasn't been anything yeah. like it. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit different. So it doesn't go from 200 to a long telephoto. It kind mm. of starts in the middle from 120 yeah. and then goes to 300. So it will be very interesting to see um, who is going to buy it. So it's uh, obviously aimed at sports and wildlife photographers. Mm. I think sports photographers probably More will, so. use, will buy the most of it. That makes sense. Um, if it had been an F4, of course, it yeah. could have complemented some of the other F4 range of yeah. lenses. But um, that's, yeah, that's a very interesting one. It does uh, look to be fluorite. No face resonal element in it, so I can't mm -hmm. imagine it's going to be particularly light. Not, yeah. not like the other... PF yeah. lenses, um, and I don't think we even know the size of the front diameter yet. No, no, they've released the photograph of it, but mm. it's very difficult to judge by the photograph. So the two main questions yeah. is how heavy and how much. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I think, this is the thing, if it's supposed to be a more pro lens than um, the 180-400 to even, because yeah. it's a 2.8, 2 .8, 8. Yeah. It, it could 
be more than 10k easily. Yeah. Easily, because the 180 to 400 bigger range but smaller aperture. So, uh, next we had the brief arrival of the 8518. Um, we only had one really. Yeah. Um, the one you opened. Yeah, the one we opened that we were allowed to have a look at. I, it's no secret, I really like this lens and 85 for me is not a focal length that I use very mm. often. Um, the lens is very well built. I found that when we put it on a Z, it was very fast to focus. How did, you took some sample shots with it? What did yes. you think? Yes, uh, I use 85 a lot, mm. and I do find this lens to be very good. Uh, it's plug and play on the camera, takes pictures. The bokeh is very nice. Bokeh is lovely. Yeah, um, for Tini, who is our social media queen and video editor, <laughs> she'll put her face on that video so you can see the samples for yourself. Yeah. But I think it's a fantastic choice for Z users. Uh, I still think that 85 1.4 is better, but it is more expensive sure. uh, and it is a lot bulkier and more difficult to use on Z series of cameras. So, yeah. so if you're a Z user, 85 1.8 is a fantastic choice. Yeah, that makes sense. I did also find with the pictures that you took, um, it the subject almost has like a 3D effect. Yeah. There's yeah. a the lot of separation. The micro contrast is yeah. very good. I think it's definitely better than 85 1.8 G lens yes. that Nikon makes. Yeah. Uh, and in terms of that, yeah, definitely for portrait photography, uh, photography is a very good choice. Fantastic. Yeah. And um, almost, I think the day before the 85 arrived, Nikon announced the 2418. 24, so yeah. So if we kind of look at a pattern, they almost announce a new lens right at the launch yeah. point of the last lens, uh, which means maybe we'll see something else mid October, who knows? But Exciting. yeah, but the 2418. Um, looks to complement the range quite nicely. I think so, yeah. So you have a choice of 24, 28 and 35 lenses and even 50 as well. Mm. So in terms of that, it, I wouldn't buy every single lens, but let's say if I'm a, let's say if I prefer 24 or 28 uh, millimeter focal distance, I would go for 24 and then you have a choice of 35 and 50. Yeah. So generally you would probably, if you're prime user, uh, you would choose two lenses out of four yeah. to benefit your, basically complement your style of photography. Yeah, and we have, um, I believe the 20 and the 28 on the roadmap for next yeah. year yeah. so that that will fit fill in those gaps and in the meantime mm -hmm. we've got the wide angle zoom so there's quite a lot of lenses now for the z range it's um happening. 14 to 30 so then we've got the 24 the 35 the 50 the 85 the 224 to 70s um that's a nice little I set so. right there yeah absolutely good lineup we have more lenses coming next year i think it's all going very well for yeah. you at the moment yeah absolutely uh, this is uh, an ongoing feature, so anytime Nikon bring out a lot, of, there was a lot of Nikon news this week, so anytime there's a lot of news, um, we will bring you more content, so stick with us, subscribe, um, and keep an eye on our channel for other videos, how-tos, uh, tours of the shop, etc. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that, that's all, folks. Yeah.